expectations and disappointing results as that career ended. No better for some of his Rangers teammates, Americans Mike Richter, Brian Leach, and Pat LaFontaine, part of a U.S. disaster. And meanwhile, Ulf Samuelsson had a most unfortunate situation with the Swedish team. But now it's back to the NHL season, and can a bad season on Broadway be saved? The Blue Shirts do have a new coach, veteran John Muckler, hoping to turn things around. The emotions with some of the Leafs Olympic participants a little different. Martin Prohashka checking in with Olympic gold. Russian Dmitry Yuskevich being knighted with a silver. And Sweden's Matt Sundin disappointed at the Olympics, but happy to put his signature on a new multi-million dollar deal once he got back. Can those positives ignite a successful stretch run for a playoff position? We have two teams, ladies and gentlemen, needing every available point, the Rangers and the Leafs, next on TSN. Rangers have trouble scoring. They're hoping Mucker can help out. But I tell you what, you look down the list, uh, Mike Keenan certainly hasn't turned things around in Vancouver, nor has Jacques Demare in Tampa, nor has Brian Murray, for that matter, in Florida. Gary, is it going to be any different here in New York? Well, first of all, I think you look at the situation this year in the NHL and four good coaches replace four good coaches. It's a fresh voice in the dressing room. That's what teams are hoping for anyway. I don't think you're going to see John Muckler change the system a lot. What they're hoping for, though, is the fact that they'll get their players to play better. Mike Richter and Brian Leach have had horrendous seasons so far. They've got to turn it around or else the Rangers are not going to make the playoffs. Well, what about the Toronto Maple Leafs? Uh, they've got to play better than 500 hockey to make the playoffs. Did you like what you saw in the game last night against the Buffalo Sabres? They played really well. They could have come out of there with two points had it not been for Hashik. And what's new? The Toronto Maple Leafs right now need all of their players to play at their very best if they're going to make the playoffs. And the key person is going to be their goaltender. It's Healy tonight. Pot Van played well last night, as we saw in the Olympics. You have got to have great goaltending. If you do, anything can happen. Well, for what it's worth, and it's not much, uh, the Leafs managed to do what the Canadian team couldn't do. They got a couple by Hashik anyways. Gord? All right, Paul, and they'll face another Olympic goaltender tonight in Mike Richter. When we come back, the latest on Sergei Fedorov. Back to Detroit, we think, and the rest of tonight's schedule. Thanks, Gord, and back just in time to hear... The ovation for some of the Olympians being introduced here, that is a Katrina LeMay Doan, gold medalist for Canada in speed skating, double gold medalist in fact, and a huge round of applause for Wayne Gretzky. And some of the most poignant pictures from the entire Olympic Games that man sitting on an empty Canadian bench after Canada had lost its shot at goal. A lot of smiling faces in the stands, but none bigger than the man on the ice. Martin Prohaska of the Czech Republic. Martin Prohaska comes out wearing his gold medal. The gold medal winning Czech team. Matt Sundin also out there at center for the Toronto Maple Leafs, of course, played for Team Sweden. And here comes Katrina to as big a round of applause or maybe even a little bigger than Wayne Gretzky's tonight. And she deserves it. Gold medal winner in speed skating. A gold and a bronze medal around the neck of Katrina LeMay Doan. And Gretzky and Sundin will come to center to take the ceremonial faceoff. And the nicest thing about that face-off, as opposed to most of the face-offs you saw at the Olympics, Gary, you didn't have to get up at 4.30 in the morning to watch it. <laughs> no, I was wondering which one was going to yawn first, Gretzky or Sundin. They're both very tired and have experienced jet lag in a big way coming back from Japan. Talked to a few players at the skate this morning and before the game tonight. 
And uh, to a man, they all said it was a lot tougher coming back than it was going over. Now, a couple of reasons. Number one, they were tired after going through the pressure and all the, the games over at the Olympics. But just the entire time change thing was a lot tougher on the body coming this way than it was going over initially. Starting goaltenders tonight brought to you by Kellogg's. The best to you each morning. Speaking of Olympians, Mike Richter will get the call for the New York Rangers in this game. He is career 7-1-2 against Toronto with a 2.75 goals against average. Glenn Healy is at the other end. And career against the Rangers, he is 11-8-1 with a 3.59 goals against average. He won a cup with the Rangers in 94. The referee tonight is Paul Stewart. And belated congratulations to Paul, who four days ago celebrated the birth with his wife, Lori of uh, their new child, Macaulay John Stewart. We're set to roll. The Rangers in their blue third jerseys with the Statue of Liberty logo in the front, the Leafs in white, and we are rolling. Good to be back watching hockey again. Here's Bruce Dryden. Gets it up around the board. McCowan tops it back in offside, called in the Leafs. If you're looking for John Muckler to have the Rangers skating with three men in deep and really pressing, I don't think you're going to see that happen. John Muckler was referring to his system being a shallow forechecking system, meaning the trap otherwise, and it's just different terminology. That's what it's all about. It's still a 1-2-2. Two, two. John Muckler said you've got to be able to mix the defensive play of the trap along with some good offensive play. Very similar to the way that Colin Campbell had this team playing, especially on the Western Road Trip. Would be expected 20 page new playbook that's not going to happen nor does it happen with most coaching changes in the league Gretzky Kovalev and Sundstrom out there in the way of the configuration for the Rangers Sundin out there for the Leafs with Johnson and Korolev Puck roll by McCallum Jason Smith looking for a bit of room. Just underway in this game between the Leafs and the Rangers here on TSN. Puck up ahead. Sullivan skips in over the blue line. Didn't get much of a shot away. Odin up there in the corner after it. Here's Matthew Schneider waiting for his mates to get outside. He chips the puck back in. Sullivan trying to get to it. And Richter decides to hang on. Mike Murphy thought his team was a little tentative early in the game last night. He thought both teams were. Just trying to figure out how this game is now going to be called. The new obstruction calls. They're going to call it rather tightly, but in all three zones. No more clutching, grabbing, or as Matt Sundin referred to, no more water skiing, I guess. Mike Murphy's team during the Olympic break, once they went back on the ice, were working on pretty much the same things they worked on in training camp. He stressed defense. He was going to make sure that this team understood that they weren't going to win games unless they worked hard. They need great goaltending, and Felix Potvin gave it to them last night. Hopefully, Healy will for the Leafs' sake tonight. Well, excuse me while I put my doubters hat on in terms of the NHL and the way things are going to be called, but we've, we've heard this song before. We've seen this, this play before. We know how it ends, and that is eventually things revert back to the way they are or were. Hopefully that won't be the case this time. But let's see. Modine steps in over the blue line. Derek King going for the front of the net. Go, go, go. King up along the board. Sullivan lurking down there trying to help out. Modine was tied up and the Rangers start back. Graves up to the line with LaFontaine. He dishes off over to Sweeney and offside was called in the Rangers. But the best players in the league have wanted the league to call the penalties. But they call did the last trapping, time. The clutching and grabbing. Yeah, they backed off. And I'm, I'm also wondering what's going to happen if, in fact, a whole trail of players start going to the penalty box and then you end up making a whole game full of power plays and penalty killing. That's what happened the last time, and that wasn't good for the game either. But they're trying it, and if it works successfully, then our game will be better because of it. Oh, no doubt. got to try it. No doubt. And, and I don't, uh, there's no knock for trying it. I'm just, I mean, last time Gary Bettman was adamant that it was going to happen, and it did for a little while, and then it didn't anymore. Well, then the GMs and owners better let it happen this time. Eastwood kicked that puck out towards the front, but it skips to Ty Domi. Domi flipping it up ahead, a high fly ball. King tried to get under it. 
Chris King and Domi up there trying to crash things loose. Finley comes up with that puck. Yeah, Finley got it out to center. 17-24 to go, first period. 0-0, the Leafs and the Rangers. Here's Richter. This has been a consistent four-checking line for Mike Murphy. Hendrickson with King and Domi. Here's Jason Smith with the puck over to McCowan. Warner moving up ahead of him. McCauley as well. McCauley back into the lineup last night against Buffalo. Strudland tipping it down into Toronto territory. Smith, Bill Berg coming in and he rattled his cage along the boards. McCauley forging his way towards center. He's got the puck now. He's by himself though, so he does the best he can. Just sort of punched it in there on goal. Smith got spun around there. Strudland couldn't get away with the spoils. He's got it now though. And Strudland will chop it in. McCauley quickly up to Warner, steps in, shooting right on. That stopped by Richter, and he keeps it in play. Gretzky had it bounce away from him. Warner plays it back up. Schneider. Nice move there to get away. Up ahead, Korolev going after it. Korolev up along the boards, played back out, though. Here's Yuskevich. Johnson trying to get to it. Driver gets there first, and Driver was driven into the boards. Here's Johnson. Nice stop by Richter right there. Johnson point blank. That was a big Johnson, but a bigger Richter on that occasion. Richter had to come up with a big save, but Kovalev made the mistake. Coming out of his own end, right along the boards, Kovalev all of a sudden ended up turning back with the puck. Watch Kovalev right there, folks. He put the puck right in the middle. Johnson had a great opportunity. McCowan up after it. LaFontaine watching him. Sullivan comes out. 15.30 to go in the first period. Sullivan and King were trying to converge there, but the puck rolled away. Here's Modine. Sullivan up ahead at center will take it. King is open over on the left wing, but the puck just dumped down in. Richter leaving it there for Lidstrom. LaFontaine coming up there with Graves. Graves fires the puck in that sizzles off the side of the goal. Here's LaFontaine. Gets it out. Sweeney. Didn't chip that through. LaFontaine's down low. Sweeney bulldogged his way towards the front. That was a nice stop there by Healy. And LaFontaine was right in the corner. Here comes King on the way in. Modine coming up with him. Derek King after it. And couldn't make a play by the time he caught up to it. Hendrickson along the boards. Pocket picked by LaFontaine. The Rangers will hustle in a change. Zettler just clearing the puck back in. Domi bumped up along the boards there. Actually, Domi did most of the bumping. He and Lidster. Lidster on the receiving end. Healy gets it up around for Zettler. Stevens and Eastwood trying to work it loose. Keen will go after it now along the boards. That was Samuelson booting it in from the blue line. Keen is back covering for him. Meanwhile, the Rangers continue to press. Here's Eastwood back in the net. Out to Keen, who's right back into the play. Good play by Chris King. He just chipped that puck up along the boards and out of danger. 13.48 to go, first period. 0-0 is the score. Keen fires it in. And he will head to the bench. Rangers and Leafs both making changes on the go. Yuskevich lumps it out to center. Warner angling up after it. Richter got to it just before him and back behind the play. A stick coming up and clipping, I believe, Ty Domi. It is, in fact, Domi. And we're going to have a high sticking call on the Rangers. Ty Domi, with the second most penalties in the National Hockey League, is going to see someone else take one for a change. Bill Berg is going to the penalty box. And Domi actually has a shot at the Toronto Maple Leafs club record for penalty minutes in a season, Andrew held by Dave Tiger Williams. Domi was looking for his man, came across through the middle of the ice, and ended up getting. Well, it was a collision. Yeah, it wasn't. Berg. It wasn't an intentional 
stick in the face by any means. In fact, it's tough to see that stick even coming up and getting him. Yeah, no, pardon me, folks. I thought it was a stick, and you seeing it on the replay, it looked like it was more of a knee or a leg that came in. Although Domi clearly with a cut lip. And the Leafs with a power play. It's a power play that went one for seven last night against Buffalo. Has not exactly been setting the house on fire, though. The Toronto power play in the last eight games is two for 29. 24th in the league, 18th best at home in the league. It's an area that's hurt the Toronto Maple Leafs all year. Here comes Korolev. Korolev up there with Sundin. Across for Sundin after it rolled by Richter. Brown and Schneider are back at the blue line. And Berezin is the other forward for the Leafs. And the Rangers changing up the penalty killing unit. LaFontaine is keen out there as the two forwards. Korolev works it across, picked up by LaFontaine, and he gets it out. Luka Bloom and Samuelson are the two defensemen for the Rangers right now. Korolev coming in. Barrison was after it. Here's Sundin. Schneider had nipped in from the point but couldn't kick the puck up to his forehand. And Samuelson gets it out. 58 seconds to go in the power play. Leafs with the man advantage. The score is 0-0. Here comes Graves. Tiptoes up. Shoots. Healy stopped that one. The Rangers have not scored a shorthanded goal all year long. Buck comes back to driver. Fire that one wide. Here's Derek King. 35 seconds left in the power play. King coming up. Clears to Buck ahead. Modine and Sullivan up there. Neither could get to it. 23 seconds left in the power play. Here comes Modine. Derek King was up straddling the blue line, but the play broken up. Juskiewicz with it now. One hop the puck in. Richter had a little bit of trouble, but he handles it. Six seconds left in the power play. Well, by watching Modine play last night and the shifts he's had so far in this game, Mike Murphy's got to be holding his breath. Can this guy possibly continue where he left off before the Olympic break? He was great before the Olympic break. He was finding his scoring touch, something that he's never had. But he's a great big strong man that has the abilities to go to the net. He went to the net, got the great shot away, and he's been doing that. Last night against Hashi, he ended up with five shots. Some goals prior to the Olympic break for Modine. And when you get a guy that's as big and as strong as he is, and he finally gets some confidence, that's a great combination. Gary, another one of those guys who came into the league late. He wasn't a 19-year-old rookie. He got drafted, played a couple of years with Brinus over in Sweden, and then came over as a rookie as a 22-year-old. That makes a big difference. 0-0 zero, zero the score here. 11-18 to go. To have you with us tonight. Here's Kavich all set to tee it up and play whistle down and a penalty coming up. It's going to be a hooking call and this one will go against the Leafs. Todd Warner heads off to the box. Rangers will get their first chance of the night on the power play. Their first John Muckler era power play. Warner ended up with Stevens right over by the boards and this is obstruction. Watch this right in that area. There you see Warner take Stevens and just really obstruct him. That's what the call was. Yeah, it was hooking, but it was obstruction. You can't do that. Is one of the things that a new coach coming in going to change around immediately the power play? That takes some time and a lot of practices. Gretzky got it across, and that one worked like clockwork. Gretzky to Sundstrom and in the net. The Rangers with a power play goal. Sundstrom gets it. Gretzky with the assist, and it's one to nothing. It was one of the Rangers' strong points this season. They were fifth best in the power play. When you get Gretzky handling the puck, he can still find people. Stevens was standing there. Gretzky just gets out of the way, finds that open ice that he's the master of, and then looks to find someone in front. Wayne Gretzky and Alexei 
Gretzky and Kovalev pick up the assists and the power play goal at 9.05. And the Rangers with a 1 0 lead. Like I said, you wouldn't want to change the power play around at all if you're John Muckley. Well, you didn't, you didn't have to, Paul, well. because the, this power play has been pretty good. They've scored 14 goals in their last 46 attempts in the last 12 games. Over 30%, so you don't want to mess with success, and the Rangers had had good success on the power play. And the power play has worked well, but in general, the Rangers not doing much offensively. They've scored three goals or less in their last 13 games. Well, the guys John Muckler's got to get going is definitely Brian Leach back in the blue line. He's a minus 28, and that just can't be. Richter's got to come up with some stellar goaltending performances for them. It's just been a season of struggle, and all of those ties, 16 of them, have been the toughest part. Mind you, against the Western Conference, they've been 500 this year. They seem to play well against the West. Pat LaFontaine's got to get it going for them. He's been good on the power play, but yet he's only scored one goal, even strength, in the last 21 games. Well, Gretzky only has one goal in his last eight games, and that was a power play goal, so he hasn't scored an even strength marker in a while. And he's 37 years of age and still in the top 15 scoring in the NHL. It's the younger guys that have got to do the job for the Rangers right now. But the Rangers are the oldest team in the league. Averaging almost just a shade under 30 years of age. Bookaboom. Clears it up around. Tomey going after it. Here's Graves. Fires a shot that was blocked by Schneider. And Schneider gobbles it up here. Out to Ty Domi. Sweeping across center. Got it up ahead to Derby Hendrickson. Chris King up on the play as well. Here's Domi with it. Puck comes out. Just came and shoots. Kind of a knuckleball, he pushed it towards the goal, and Richter no problem to hold on to that with 9.35 to go in the first period. I thought Richter looked a little shaky in tonight's game. He didn't have a very good Olympics. There's the slumping snipers. Gretzky's be pointed out, but again, he's 37 years of age, shouldn't be playing as much as he's been playing. LaFontaine's one of the key guys that's got to get it going for them. How about Kevin Stevens? He's averaged 37 goals per season in his career up to this point. Yeah, but he, you know, he's still on pace to score 17 or 18 goals this year. And I don't think the Rangers expected a great deal from this guy. The last few years, Kevin Stevens hasn't exactly been somebody that a lot of people have been really wanting to go out and get. You know, his earlier days were his better days, but yet I think uh, he's been okay for the Rangers this year. They had 34 points with L.A. last year. He's, a, he's at least zero. I mean, he's not a minus. Those other guys we're talking about are all big minuses. Here's Lidster with it. Works it up ahead. Mike Keane coming up through center. Zettler was marking him closely. Here's Richter. Stevens gets it up ahead. Keane darts up to the blue line. Rangers were in a change, so he was just content to fire the puck in, and it ends up, in fact, over the glass and out of play. Eight fifty-one to go in period number one. The Rangers lead in a power play goal from Sunday. Dark Rangers on your right, Mike Keane playing in his 700th NHL game, and on your left, Bruce Driver playing in his 900th. Mike Keane with a couple of Stanley Cups during that career, and in fact, he has a tattoo to commemorate each cup. Has a little Stanley Cup on his ankle for each one. Rukaboom skips back after him. Here's Bill Byrd. There's it up. Byrd back of the goal, working hard. And the hard work almost paid off. He almost got the puck in front. Strudlin was cruising around out there with Langdon. Buck got caught up there. Langdon came in with a little extra push. Ah, Jason Smith faked as though he was going to fight. Drop his gloves. Go after Langdon, seeing whether Langdon might take him on. Jason Smith had the puck caught up in his pads, couldn't get it loose. And Langdon, the tough guy for the New York Rangers, was right there. Brian Strudlin wanted more ice time. Well, you know, whenever a coach gets fired, and you can almost 
you don't know what's going to come out of a lot of players. If a team plays with three lines, the fourth liner is going to want to make sure that the new coach goes with four lines. If you go with four lines, the new coach coming in, both for most of the top players, they want them to shorten the bench, go with two or three lines. Everybody has an agenda, don't they? <laughs> Well, you know, they don't mean anything by it as far as the coach previous either. They're just trying to get their message across to the people who are now responsible. They're trying to be supportive at the same time with the new coaches. Korolev, Sandin, and Johnson up there. They get it loose. Puck fired wide by Yuskevich. Gretzky got it up ahead a little bit too far for Sundstrom. Healy plays it around for Matthew Schneider. On the way out, Sundin cruising up the middle. Flanks off there to his right. Puck just fired in by Yuskevich. Korolev moving after the puck. Gretzky digged it ahead. Sweeney came in and the play offside. You know, it's pretty funny too when coaches do get fired. Then some of those cliches that are going to come out. You know that if a team has been pretty defensive, that they're going to come out and start talking about, well, we got to open it up a little bit more. We got to make sure that we're more creative. If a team is rather offensive, poor defensively, then so often when the new coach comes in, then it's going to be his responsibility to make sure the team is better defensively. Well, fortunately or unfortunately, depending on who you are and what side of the fence you're on, it, it's just part of the cycle of sports. Coaches are hired, coaches are fired, and you hear all the same complaints and compliments. Just change the names and the teams and the situations. I don't think that takes a thing away from the job that Coley Campbell did. Or Terry Stress for Tom Rennie. Right on down the line. Or Terry Murray or any of the coaches that have been fired. Settler fired it up, that bounced wide. Here's Graves, he's bounced off the puck by Domi, trying to get it out there for King. King has lost his stick, and Graves pulls the puck up ahead to Sweeney. Well, Fontaine was looking for it there, but Brown has it for the Leafs. Up around to Derek King, starting back. Here's King, a one on three. Now Sullivan comes up to help out, gets to that puck. Sullivan tried to center it, Eastwood picked that off, and clears it out. Samuelson clearing the puck in. Down into the corner, Eastwood going towards the front of the net. Comes up to Bukabu, fired a shot. Nice block by Derek King. Bukabu just golfs it up there on the second attempt. Smith up ahead to Sullivan. He's got good speed. He's got a chance and doesn't get a goal. Puck wouldn't sit down for him and it's cleared out of play. But a nice quick pass up to Sullivan. It just wouldn't sit down for him, and he wasn't able to complete the play with a good shot. And that'll frustrate Steve Sullivan because he knows that his job is to take advantage of those offensive opportunities. A pass from way back in his own end set him free, right up through the middle. Great pass and great acceptance by Steve Sullivan, but you're right, he just couldn't get that puck rolling. Look at it, folks. That puck is on a big time roll, and that's the toughest thing when you're on a breakaway, knowing people are gonna be right on your butt, that you're going to have to somehow get that puck to lay down for you. You're not gonna be able to control it. Sullivan's probably a little frustrated. He's only had a couple assists in his last five games coming into tonight, and he wants to score. Oh, and he's been a guy, speaking as we were a few moments ago, of guys complaining about ice time. Sullivan has complained a few times this year. He's up there now, tried to sneak it in at the side, and Richter held the fort. Modine almost chipped that puck away from Lidster. Modine is just playing with some great confidence. He's six foot three, 218 pounds, and has the abilities to be that power forward. Well, I'm not looking at Modine of being a 30 goal scorer or a 35 goal scorer. Who knows? That's not saying that he couldn't. But this man right now, if he could develop into a 20 goal scorer, as the Leafs had hoped this past summer he would be this year, then what a great addition that would be to this hockey club. And right now, he's playing that way. Five twenty-two to go in this first period. The Rangers are up one to nothing. Nicholas Sundstrom with the goal for the Rangers. It came on the power play. Modine was upended there by Leach. Rangers start back the other way. Sundstrom clears it in. 
Sundstrom is up there with Gretzky. Kovalev is the other forward. This is Sullivan, Modine trailing. Derek King up there as well. Pass missed 10. He's Kavich trying to get it on goal. Sundstrom with the block and he gets it out. Gretzky being watched by Schneider. This is Bruce Driver with it now. LaFontaine up the middle. Almost hit him with that pass. Turned out it was a two-line pass. 4.37 to go in the first period. 1-0 Rangers lead. Cooper, we're coast to coast with the Leafs and the Rangers. And not a bad first period so far. 4.37 to go. The Rangers are up 1-0. So how do you like the new and improved NHL? Big well, difference yet? Well, I don't think we've had a lot of situations which warranted obstruction penalties for tonight. Pat LaFontaine was complaining to Paul Stewart about one right at the neutral ice when that two-line offside pass was called. Shots on goal are five to four for the Leafs. That would be six right there, and Richter holds on to it. Good to have this man back. McCauley has proved so far to Mike Murphy this season that this guy's a tenacious checker. He knows what to do defensively. He ended up coming back for his first game last night and had four shots on net. He's a welcome addition to the Toronto Maple Leafs. He's young. He's just going to continue to get better. And this first year has been a learning experience for him. Warner couldn't wheel that pass in. I think one of, the boards by him. one of the reasons Murphy really likes him is because he's so smart. He really has got a good head in his shoulders and takes everything in a coach's set. And a great temperament as well. Tough to play in any city in the NHL, but I think it's a little tougher as a young player breaking in in a real hockey city like Toronto or New York or Montreal or one of the big cities like that. Barrison gets it up ahead to McCauley. Battles with Langdon there. He's twisted into the ice. Warner coming up looking for the loose puck, but it's tied up. That last shift that we just saw, pretty good example of how John Buckler is going to have this team operating right now. Very similar. A 1-2-2. Two, two. Watch this area. There's the first man in, and there you see all four guys back in the neutral zone. That's called shallow forechecking in John Muckler's term. Some people will call it the trap. That's at least it's a different terminology for it. John Davidson was, call, was telling me before the game here that Muckler's also referred to it as the wedge, but nevertheless, it's a 1 2 2. So if you were expecting the New York Rangers to come out again, as we mentioned earlier, with two, three men in four checking deep and playing the way the Edmonton Oilers used to play back the these days, that's not going to happen. Leach slides it back there, looking for a little help from his defensive partner. Sundin working along the boards against Leach. The Korolev back to Sundin. Johnson is down there in the fray as well and he's got the puck now back for Sundin. Leafs trying to work it around down low. Sundin up along the boards. Down to Korolev. Make that Johnson. Now Korolev has it. Driver pursuing him. Sundin will pick it up. Nobody able to get open yet. Now Sundin gets it. Oh, that was Snyder trying to pinch in from the left point. But he was being watched very closely by Tim Sweeney. Side called in the Rangers. One nothing here for the Rangers. We have action from Tampa and the Devils. Here's Gordon. Eastwood was able to get into the zone just because he used his size and his strength. He got by Chris King, and that's not easy to do because Chris King plays a pretty tough along the boards. King ends up falling, and Eastwood gets his chance, but Healy stood his ground. He came out, he challenged. And he was able to take that scoring opportunity right away from Eastwood. Healy knows this team, and he knows them pretty well. Sorry, Gary, I think Paul Stewart had just lost sight of the puck. That's why he blew the whistle. He sort of shrugged his shoulders like I, I couldn't see it. Now he's going to call a penalty. That's why he blows the whistle this time. Right off the faceoff. And it is going to go against the Leafs. Darby Hendrickson heading to the box. Darby Henderson picked up 
an obstruction call penalty last night and right from the face off that's where you can see it he ended up interfering right at the face off face off interference tripping call it what you want he ends up going to the penalty box i don't i don't know if you can hear it at home or not but they're announcing the penalties in the building as not just tripping but obstruction tripping obstruction hooking those are the calls we've had so far so they're making sure that the people in the building know that those obstruction penalties are being called And Paul Stewart having a discussion right now, long range, albeit, with Mike Murphy, the Leafs coach. Stewie's always involved in the play. He's still doing a little bit of that. He gets right into it. He'll yak back to the coaches and to the players. He's always done it. You're not going to change him now. He was as thrilled as any of the players to be uh, working the All-Star game. In fact, he might have been a little more thrilled than some of the players to be <laughs> participating in the All-Star game. He That's was a really, good point. He was really pumped about it. Around the boards, Leach there at the line, able to hold the floor, not quite. Sundin got it outside the line, but couldn't quite get it by Leach. Brian Leach was able to hold his ground. He kept that puck in at least and was able to stop Sundin from maybe breaking away on a breakaway. Well, they're going to say it was an intentional offside yeah. and move it all the way back down to Rangers territory. 136 to go on the power play for New York. Yeah, he didn't keep the puck in, but he at least kept it away from. Matt Sundin getting it because Sundin could have well have been gone. Wayne Gretzky having some discussions with Brian Leach. Will Wayne Gretzky retire this year? People told me this morning that that's what he talked about at the Olympics, that this would be it for him after this season. And after John Muckler was hired, he said, well, it was 100% before, maybe it's 90% now. Gretzky plays it in. Puck skips up on a play. Gretzky's got a couple of years left in his contract. So if he decided to pack it in this year, it would be his decision, not the New York Rangers, who wanted to play for another three years. Wayne Gretzky may change his mind, though, come the end of the season. I think it's all going to depend for Gretzky as to how the remainder of this season goes for him. He's just a class act. He showed that once again at the Olympics. And he ended up, a lot of people thinking that Wayne Gretzky was too old to be part of Canada's Olympic team. He once again ended up being one of the top players for Canada. He was definitely in the top four for Canada all through the tournament. 37 years of age, the guy continues to come up with just incredible performances for a man his age. He has been an amazing athlete for what he's handled on and off the ice. The greatest player ever in the opinion of a lot of hockey fans and you can pencil me in on that ledger and he had a lot of fun at the olympics too and boy what a thrill for the other canadian athletes in the village to be living with wayne gretzky and he was great with them as were all of the canadian players on the team i thought they were just one great class act representing canada over there Leach trying to work it up graves picks it up 34 seconds left in the power play for the rangers 38 seconds to go in this period. Sweeney along the boards. Being watched by Johnson and Snyder. Johnson will pick it up. Starts back for the Leafs. 25 seconds to go in the period. He has Chris King with him. Drops it off for King. Now it's slashed away by Graves, who controls for the Rangers. Up to Keane. Skipped away from him. McCallum plays it back. 10 seconds to go in the period. And the team's now back at even strength. Keane gets it up ahead. Eastwood drops it off. Stevens time for a shot. He gets it away. Healy with the save. And he will hang on to it. 1.7 seconds to go in this first period. We'll see if Mike Richter ends up coming out of the net for this important faceoff. He should. They're not going to score. The Leafs have no chance of scoring. Well, John Muckler right now looking as though he is not going to take Mike Richter out. Everybody up for the faceoff. 1.7 seconds to go. Eastwood tried to get it back quickly to Stevens. The play didn't work, and that will do it. For period number one, Rangers with a one to nothing lead. Shots on goal in the first to six apiece. First intermission coming up, and here again is your host, Gord Miller.
All right, Paul, coming up in our first intermission, Home Hardware Close to Home features Florida's Dave Gagne. Mike Toth has a TSN Tonight update. We've got out-of-town scores and highlights, and Bob McKenzie has a beef. You won't want to miss that. That's coming up in our first intermission as the Rangers go to the room with a 1-0 lead on the Maple Leafs. Is brought to you by Gatorade and Sundstrom's 12th of the year on the power play at 9:05 is the only goal of the first period. Shots on goal even at 6-6 for the second. Back to Paul and Gary. Tough town to play in. Uh, Wayne Gretzky, all the New York Rangers. Man, these guys feel the pressure. I know you talk about Toronto and about Montreal, but I was looking through the internet today at some of the headlines in the New York papers, and how do you like this for a line and a half about the Rangers? And uh, I believe it was the New York Daily News that said, the Rangers are a Kmart team with a Bloomingdale's payroll. Well, that, it's a, a tough a city to coach in, a tough city to play in. You're right, and so often people refer to Montreal and Toronto being tough. They are tough to play in. I think the writers here in Toronto have always been... Not, not only tough, but they've been fair in assessing it. They know their hockey. I'm not saying that the main writers for the New York Rangers don't, because they do know their hockey, too. However, there are a lot of people in New York that get out the knives, and when they get them out, boy, are they ever sharp. One yeah. lunge, and they can stab you and kill you. Uh, point being, I mean, it's the biggest English-speaking media market in the world, and it's a tough place to play in, or coach. Here's Sundin. Works it around, leaks right in there off the bat here in this second period. Sundin bumping with Gretzky. Puck comes up around the boards. Sundstrom up ahead to Gretzky. In over the blue line. Kovalev up there with him. Gretzky just flips it up. McCallan up to Sundin. Here's Jason Smith. Looking around, Johnson making his way towards the net, but Richter gobbled it up just before Johnson got there, although Johnson was, couldn't resist the temptation to take a little swipe. What a great ovation that was tonight for Wayne Gretzky at the start of the game. What a tremendous smile on his face. He knows that Canada appreciated his efforts and his teammates' efforts at the Canadian Olympics or at the Olympics in Japan. One thing, though, we were talking about in the first period about Gretzky and the possibility of retirement at the end of this season. I remember years ago, remember when he had the back problem, he was playing in Los Angeles, and I think he contemplated at that point in time. Gordy Howe said something to him that he'll always remember. Don't ever give up something that you love so much too soon. Sullivan centered it out in front. Nobody home that time for the Leafs. And Gordy Howe waited to what? Was he 51 years of age? <laughs> Buck bounces up, and Richter plays a tricky hop off the backboards and hangs onto it. After one period, scoring chances 4-3 in favor of the Leafs. And the Leafs trailing in the faceoff department 15-11. Here's his cabins. Snyder with it. Over to use Kavich again. There are King along the boards. The Leafs couldn't push it loose. Sweeney rolled it ahead. LaFontaine couldn't get his stick on it. Now Graves will pick it up. LaFontaine was down low. Sweeney was up there as well, but then the play going offside. Graves, even though he's one of those minus players, minus 17 for the New York Rangers. He's had 17 goals this season in the last five games that he played coming into the night's game. He ended up with 20 shots in those five games. That was the Western road trip. He was really trying to get this hockey club going. Second on the team in shots right now with 160. Adam Graves is just a true competitor out there. He went through some real serious back problems. And it looks as though Adam Graves has really been able to regain a lot of his abilities this past season. He should be able to hit the 500 career point mark next season sometime. He hasn't come back the way that he was 
previous two when he was scoring so many goals and so tough and strong, but he still has got the heart of goal and a big heart and tries so hard every night. Well, he came back last year, Gary, with a big year. He had 61 points, which was his best season since 93-94. So, yeah, it was a big turnaround. Stevenson over the blue line. Dropped it off there. Puck fired wide by Keane. Eastwood was up looking for a rebound. This is Samuelson with it now. Warner watching him. Up for Stevens. And play whistle down. A penalty coming up. Interference is the call. Keane and McCauley. McCauley went down. And Mike Keane in his 700th game is going off to the penalty box. Some of the players that may suffer more than others when it comes to the obstruction calls are going to be your third and fourth liners. They tend to be more of your defensive checkers. They are the guys that will so often get more of the penalties. This was just a straight interference penalty, not obstruction interference. So the Leafs with their second power play tonight. They had one power play goal last night against the Sabres. They were one for seven. Leafs slams it in. Brown and Schneider back at the blue line for the Leafs. Johnson, Korolev, and Sundin up front. And Berg just flicks it in. Healy turned that aside. 140 to go on the power play for the Leafs. Here comes Sundin. Tried to work it across for Korolev. That was broken up. Here's Brown with it. Brown and Schneider played together on the power play last night. Back at the points to offensive defense. Johnson drops it off. Goes after the return feed. Looking for Sundin. He bounces it to him. Sundin back up for Johnson. Around for Korolev. Nobody in front yet. Korolev back to Brown. Johnson is down low, Sundin's in the slot. Here's Johnson. In front, Sundin couldn't quite get his stick on that. Here's Brown with it. 58 seconds left in the power play. Johnson, sharp angle, Richter stopped it and holds on. Johnson didn't have much room there. Brown, at one point in time, was known as a good goal scorer, a great goal scorer. In fact, he's had 320 goal seasons playing with Matthew Schneider along the point of the power play. Brown said during the Olympic break that he's got a new perspective about hockey and about life because he came close to death with the ankle infection that he had. He realized that there were a lot of important things out there in life and health and your family were definitely more important than that of the game of hockey. But he's back and the Leafs should benefit from his and his being back because they need somebody that can help Matthew Schneider move that puck out of their own end and definitely on the power play as we talked in the first period it's been a big pain in the side for the Leafs this year 35 seconds left in this power play here's Schneider making some headway puck just rolled wide Sullivan may have tipped it on the way in he was right in front of Richter there but the puck comes back out 23 seconds left in the power play Brown gets it up ahead Bear is coming in. Sullivan picks it up. Derek King is the other forward out there for the Leafs. Ten seconds left in the power play. Here's Sullivan looking. Passing off down low to Brown. Trying to snap it out. Sullivan fired it wide. And the penalized player back out as Leach shovels the puck to center. Here comes King. Shoots. Up off the glass and all the way back out. Is Kavich back to pick it up as both teams hustle in changes. 15-15 to go in the second period. Hendrickson up. Tried to chop it loose there for Domi. Bill Bird up towards the line with Langdon broken up. Domi comes back. Hendrickson is with him. Chris King, the other forward, coming up in the play. Langdon starting back for the Rangers. Strudlin pumping his man. That was Settler. Now there goes Langdon right after Domi, and he took him hard into the end boards. Keep an eye on it. Domi had quite a scrap last night with Rob Ray, and they continue to chat behind the play. Samuelson ran his man over. Did he ever flatten Chris King? And now Domi wants to get in there after Langdon. Yeah, Domi wasn't looking at the Samuelson. Chris King's situation, he had something else in his mind, and that was Langdon. 
As Tim Nowak, the linesman, trying to keep them separated. But Chris did King ever, sorry, Gary, did King ever get flattened there by Samuelson, though? It, it looked almost as, a, as though it was a hit from behind. Now Chris King is getting up real slowly. He went into the boards and hard, and I tend to agree with you. Samuelson took him into the boards from behind. Watch King right here. Well, he sort of turned away from him. He saw Samuelson coming and then did turn his back to him to protect the puck. Hendrickson came in, but Domi, meanwhile, had Langdon on his mind. 14.36 to go in the second period. We'll be back in a moment. Unable to stop Matt Sundin, Francois Dupuis is forced to become a gardener. Uh, you got a skate sharpener I can borrow there? Go away, me beliefs! You remind me of Matt Sundin. You're the worst leaves on earth, you little Matt Sundin. I never knew what he was going to do. Go top self, bother self, top side, stick side. It's Mr. Spot. Die, me beliefs, die! I'm gonna kill you! Well, Derek Langdon is the only player in the penalty box right now. That's Chris King on the Leafs bench back up after being popped in the corner. This was the battle going on behind the play between Domi and Langdon. And that's where I think Langdon's stick kind of caught Domi again right in the face. And then going back up the ice, you see Domi didn't even see what was going on in the corner. Not until then, when King was already down, did he even get a glance at it? He had somebody else in the corner of his eye. Well, quite a cross-check there from Langdon as well, or a high stick. Call it what you want. Referee Paul Stewart calls it a double minor for high sticking. And it's a good call, too, because Langdon. Langdon went right after Domi. Domi was trying to stay out of it. And Langdon did get that stick right up, and that's what ended up cutting Ty Domi again. Big chance here for a lethargic Toronto power play to snap out of a slump, do some damage, and at least tie the game up. They're down one to nothing. The Rangers scored a power play goal back in the first period. And it's Korolev, Johnson, and Sundin up front to start things for the Leafs. Schneider and Brown back at the blue line. Here comes Matt Sundin. Johnson going towards the front of the net. Now sets up down low. Sundin up, trying to get it to Johnson. Corlan along the boards. Down to Sundin. Sends it around. Schneider moves up after it. Knocked down there. Nice play by Corlan to get it back to Sundin. Up to Schneider. Shooting. Richter took a bite out of that one and knocked it away. Schneider just loves to flash in from that left point and get the scoring chance. He's got it here. Schneider. Corlan. Back for Brown. Sundin is in front, trying to cause a little havoc. Korolev with it. Looks through. Snyder moved up. Korolev shoots. Ripped it on goal. Rebound in front. Sundin had a chance, but Richter had a save. 2.57 to go on the power play for Toronto. Sundin was right there. He just didn't have much room to shoot, but boy, he likes moving that puck to Schneider. He knows that Matthew Schneider, once he gets that puck, has got the quick acceleration to move in from the blue line. Snyder did exactly that. He moved right into the top of the circle and got that shot away. Sundin set him up perfectly. Matthew Snyder had a big night last night. He got nailed right there by Pekka. He went down hard, went off, then ended up coming back. He made a good defensive play in the overtime. And he was credited for the goal. They took it away from him. Today, Matt Sundin was given the goal back. That was the game-tying goal. And that was the setup. Sundin was questionably in the crease. The goal counted. That was the goal to tie the game out of the dying moments. And Langdon did get that stick right up, and that's what ended up. Puck cleared up ahead. Samuelson gets it around the boards. 
Puck across to Yuskevich. Barrison around back of the net. Here's Modine. Up for Barrison. Snapped it in front of the goal, and Sullivan couldn't get to it. He was being held up there at the side. Barrison thought about going in a little closer in on Rector, but Samuelson gave him a pretty good chop. Changed his mind. Yuskevich plays it out. Two minutes left in the Toronto four-minute power play. Modine and Sullivan trying to work the puck loose. Sullivan with it. Barrison is in front. So is Modine. Sullivan still with it. Down low to Barrison. Trying to get it in front. Nice play there by Bookaboom to drop in front. Great. That was intended for Yuskevich. Picked off by you-know-who. And Gretzky gets it up ahead to Graves. Fire that one in wide. There a guy in the game who anticipates better than Wayne Gretzky. Sundin up there after it. Send it in front. Oh, nice stop by Richter. He got in front of that as Schneider tried to pull it by him. Here's Johnson. Up to Sundin. Sundin battles up. Puck in towards the corner. Korolev after it. Johnson gets it up around the boards. In out. 57 seconds left in the power play for the Leafs. Here's Korolev. Up to Johnson. Shooting. Fired it wide. Bird coming back. Pushes one through to Healy. 40 seconds left in the power play. Best chance going to Korolev just a few moments ago as he tried to cut across in front of Richter. And he's up there again. Korolev trying to knock it loose. Johnson as well, but Richter hangs on to it. 28 seconds left in the power play. Korolev, who has been a pleasant surprise for the Toronto Maple Leafs, ends up with a great scoring opportunity. He's really had lots of zip out there tonight. The rest did him a lot of good as it's done a lot of players in the National Hockey League, a lot of good. getting some sunshine and then getting back to training camp. Korolev went right to the net. He's just following up in the back. Now Sundin ends up throwing it through. Korolev picks it up and then tried to go to his backhand. Richter really outguessed him. Came out, made a great save on Korolev. Sundin with the great setup. 28 seconds to go on the power play here. Let's check out action in Chicago. The impression brought to you by Bauer. Leave an impression. A warm impression to start tonight's game. A big round of applause from the sold-out house here at Maple Leaf Gardens for Wayne Gretzky. Put on a great performance with Canada's Olympic team and then was in on an assist on the Rangers' first and only goal in this game. And a holding the stick penalty coming up here. You could hear Paul Stewart all the way up here. He yelled it right out, holding the stick. Chris King is off to the penalty box, and we're off to damp. Hey, sounds good to me, Greener. Oh, just for a highlight, actually. And the Tampa Bay Lightning have tied up the game. Damon Lankow taps home the pass from Alexander Selivanov. And the Bolts, winners of back-to-back -back games, 18 days apart, have tied it at one. Well, you got to take the good news when you can if you're a Tampa fan. And they'll take that little uh, stat. Chris King had a hold of Wayne Gretzky's stick. He might have wanted that for a souvenir. Gretzky out there on the faceoff. Worked it back. Leach and Kovalev back at the blue line. Kovalev up for Gretzky. Sundstrom and Stevens the other forward. Sundstrom back for Gretzky. Lines up with a shot. Stop. Rebound. Healy stretching back. I don't know if he had to make the save or not. He's lost his stick, though. McCowan trying to get it out, but the Rangers keep the pressure on. Leach back to Kovalev. Fires it through. That's why Jason Smith has given his defenseman stick to Healy. So Smith is stickless. The goalie stick is lying in the corner. Here's Gretzky moving in front. Back for Leach. The Leafs can't get it out. And play finally whistled down. An interference call coming up. And it's going to go against Stevens, and is he miffed at the referee? Well, a series of bad luck or mistakes, call them whatever you want, but the Toronto Maple Leafs wasn't only Healy that was.
without a stick. Korolev tried to give Healy a stick and then Healy dropped it, so Korolev didn't have one, and then Jason Smith didn't have one when he finally successfully gave it to Healy. This is Stevens, watch him. He's on McCowan right here, but he just pushed that stick further away from Jason Smith, and that's why he got the penalty. And that kills the Rangers' power play off after only 43 seconds. Smith was trying to pick that stick up, and Kevin Stevens decided to make it a little bit more difficult for him. Here's Yuskevich with it. The team's at even strength for the next minute and seven seconds, and then the Leafs will have a 43-second power play. Yuskevich plays it in. Leafs back to pick it up. LaFontaine to Graves. Up to the line, Graves tried to come in. Driver sort of got in his way and put the play offside. Yuskevich has it. Up for Barrison. Sullivan digs into the corner after him. Sweeping all the way around. Sullivan still with it. Driver tied him up and knocked him down. And another penalty coming up against the Rangers. Bruce Driver, I believe, will head to the box. It'll be a hooking call, and the Leafs will have a power play when we come back in the penalty box for hooking. This is where some of the smaller players in the league will benefit from the rules if they continue to call him. Watch Sullivan. He's one of the smaller players in the league. He ends up getting hooked by Driver, and Driver gets penalized for him. If Driver hadn't have hooked him, then Sullivan may well have got around him and right back into a better scoring position. be a four-on-three power play for the Leafs. Still looking to squeeze one behind Richter. Toronto had a four-minute power play earlier this period. Managed four shots, but couldn't solve Richter. Brown to Sundin. Back to Brown. Back to Sundin. Cranks it. That was blocked. Nice play by Samuelson to drop in front of it. Sundin reloads and fired it wide. Here's Brown, up ahead to Sundin. Dropped it back for Brown. Here's Snyder, waiting, up to Brown. Fake his shot. Gets it up tight to Korolev, in front of the net. Puck just rolls through. Leafs now in a two-man advantage. Here's Brown, ready, set. Passed it up ahead there for Korolev. Back out for Snyder. Shoots one, rebound, batted away. 20 seconds left in the two-man advantage for Toronto. Sundin after it, and that's just gobbled up and smothered by big Ulf Samuelson. Ulf Samuelson, who played three games for his country, and then wanted to play one more game for the United States. No, he couldn't do that. He's got dual passports, so... And unfortunately, he couldn't play the fourth game for his country. Samuelson is rock solid, though, out there, and he gives you everything he's got, and he's a tough one. The Leafs, though, ended up at least getting that puck into a better scoring position. Brown fed the pass off. Korolev then worked his way in right through Leach. Samuelson was there. Korolev has had a couple of good opportunities in this second period. The Rangers have called a timeout with 17 seconds to go on the two-man advantage for the Leafs. Let's check out action between the Kings and the Hawks. Here's Gord. Well, oh, L.A. is red hot. One loss in its last 12 games, and now up 2-0 as Glenn Murray has his second of the game. Kings with two-goal lead on the Hawks. He is, as his uh, coach calls him, a real horse. Snyder moves up. Korolev. Snyder. 
Sundin was lurking just off the edge of the crease. The Leafs couldn't work it to him. Stevens returns to the ice. It's now a one-man advantage for 42 seconds for the Leafs. Buck comes back to Matthew Snyder. Works it up ahead to Sundin. Gets it across. Brown had moved in from the right point. Couldn't get his stick on it. Now he's got it. Brown up for Barrison. Pressured there by Lidster. Look at Sundin. Crash up. Got the puck in front and nobody was home for the Leafs. After Sundin had just willed that puck loose. Pushing his man off the puck and getting it in front. 13 seconds left in the power play for Toronto. Barrison across for Sullivan. Broken up there. Puck cleared out by Keane. This is Schneider, maybe time for one more drive. Gets it up for Derek King. Fed it through, Sullivan couldn't get to it. And the penalized player back on. A couple of big kills for the New York Rangers in this period. Teams are back at even strength. Smith with it for the Leafs. Leafs 0 for 6 on the power play in this game. Here comes Gretzky, looking through, fired a shot. Healy got a piece of that, and it was enough. Gretzky was looking for that top corner glove side on Healy. Here comes Modine, climbs his way to the corner for Sullivan. Works it back. Puck bobbles and wobbles to Finley. He gets it up around to Gretzky, who clears it out. Five minutes, 48 seconds to go in the second period. One to nothing. The Rangers are leading the Leafs. Here's Gretzky again coming in. Now Derek King with it. McCowan up for Sullivan. Up for Jason Smith. Derek King. Working against Graves. Now Modine up trying to help out. Bookaboom with it. Now Gretzky took it away from King. Comes in over the line. Offside though. Graves was offside with 5.05 to go here in the Oh, we got a penalty period. though. Paul Stewart called a penalty on that. I didn't think at the time that it was offside because Graves worked his way back to the blue line. Derek King ended up picking up the penalty. So now the Rangers will have their opportunity. An obstruction tripping call, and it was King who obstructed Graves, who was trying to get back on side. Just like that. Right there. That's where Graves went down. He did stay on side, but King ends up picking up the obstruction penalty. Obstruction tripping is the call. 1-0 the score in this game. The Rangers lead the Leafs. The only goal back at 9.05 of the first period. Sundstrom got it for the Rangers. The toughest thing for coaches and players right now is adjusting to these new rules and how they're going to be called. And consistency then will play a big part in that learning experience. Will it be consistent night after night from referee to referee? That's the most difficult thing. Sweeney in over the blue line. Up there with LaFontaine and Stevens. This is Stevens with the puck now. Around for LaFontaine. Leach comes in there to help out. And play whistled down. Another penalty coming up. It's going to go against Yuskevich, who got LaFontaine along the boards. LaFontaine's being checked out by Paul Stewart. Not that drawing blood makes any difference, but Paul Stewart wanted to check out the damage on LaFontaine. Yuskevich is going to be heading to the penalty box. Yuskevich came around and right here got LaFontaine right in the face with his stick. Yuskevich deserves that one. While they sort this out, let's check out action in Boston. Here's Gordon Miller. Face. Semantics at this point. And is a two-man advantage for the Leafs. Slashing, high-sticking, interference, whatever you want to call it. Two-man advantage for the Rangers. Puck comes back. Kovalev steps up. Rifle to shot. That's the second time in this game he's had a chance to just tee it up from the top of the slot. Healy stopped them both times. LaFontaine back to Leach. Works it over. Kovalev back for Leach. Kovalev moves in a little closer. Shoots. 
Tried a wrist shot that time, and Healy stopped him again. Kovalev's definitely getting the opportunity here because he's playing in the point with Leach on the power play, and along with Gretzky and Lafontaine and Graves out there. A pretty powerful five players. Healy just cut down the angle. He was able to come up with that save. And then earlier, Healy once again through traffic was somehow able to see that puck. I'm not sure that he did see it, but because he was in the right position and because he was standing up, he was able to make the save. Right now, Paul Stewart is talking to Healy. Healy may have been a little shaken up by that last replay that we showed you. Well, they well, took it right in the top of the chest. They like to put Kovalev back on the right point. He's normally a right winger, and they put him back there in the power play. And in an earlier power play in this period for the Rangers, he had a similar chance to that one you saw that he took from the top of the slot. Just drilled it, and Healy was able to knock it down. He has so much talent. He's a young man, yet he has been so frustrating for coaches. Okay. Including uh, one just recently deposed, Colin Campbell. He must have been trying to figure out when Kovalev was going to start to put some consistency together. Kovalev with the puck now. I was referring to his giveaway tonight earlier in the very first period and frustrating maybe Munkler. Kovalev works it down for Gretzky. Back for Kovalev. Up for Gretzky. Kovalev again to Leach. Kovalev to Gretzky. Tries a quick pass it there across in front. Healy got in front of it. Gretzky has it again. Back for Kovalev. Shoots. That was blocked. Leach. Kovalev. Fire scores. Kovalev finally got one through. Healy got a piece of it. And a power play goal for the Rangers on a two-man advantage. Puts them up 2-0. Yeah, the two-man advantage, and that's what did it. The Rangers had lots of opportunity, lots of ice. That was a good block right there, but then the Rangers end up with another great opportunity. Sundin had come up with the block. Graves had been standing right in front of Healy. Now, did he tip it? No, I don't think so. Nope. Not from that angle, anyway. Graves was there, though, doing damage just through blocking the path. Healy wasn't able to get a good look at it. Yuskevich's bad penalty ended up costing the Leafs. Leach and Gretzky pick up assists on the power play goal for the Rangers. Their second power play goal of the game, and they still have a man advantage for the next 30 seconds. Just a matter of time, the way the puck kept going back to Kovalev, the trigger man on that power play. He was just pounding away and finally got one in behind Healy. Well, when you had Kovalev and the other four partners that he had out there with all the talent that they possessed, it was just a matter of time before they were going to end up putting one by Healy. They could really pass the puck around. They had shooting abilities, and Kovalev scores. And with Kovalev right now, John Muckler has got a huge assignment. Get this guy going. Colin Campbell has been frustrated by him, and Kovalev now has a fresh start under a new coach. We'll see whether John Muckler can get him going. Stevens plays it back. Here's Driver. Ten seconds left in the Rangers. One man advantage. Well, King ran into Keane. Or vice versa along the boards. They're both right back up and into it, though. A couple of tough, pretty players. King. Now Leach with it. Teams are back at even strength. Settler has it for Toronto. Back from account. 2.20 to go in the second period. Rangers lead 2-0. Todd Warner along the board. Trying to drive by Driver. Leach plays it up. Bear is in for the Leafs. Warner in motion on the left wing. It gets cleared into his corner. Warner up, flashing towards the goal. Richter stopped him. Sweeney. Gets it to Finley. Back for Sweeney. Graves is up there, too. Jason Smith knocked it away. 1.45 to go in the period. Lipster with it. Up for Finley. King along the boards. 
Here's Sweeney. LaFontaine in over the blue line, looking for Sweeney. Gets it to him. Sweeney got to the front, but couldn't get oriented to get a shot away. Derek King coming back. Up to the line. Has Bears in with him and Sullivan. Sullivan went in offside, however. 116 to play in the second period. The Rangers lead 2-0 on a couple of power play goals. Following tonight's game for the TSN Turning Point, brought to you by Super 8 Motels. With over 1,600 locations throughout North America, life is great at Super 8. With Gary Green. NHL tonight at TSN. The Rangers leading the Leafs by a score of 2-0. Rangers finishing up a long stretch in the road. Won't we'll call it a road trip because of the midwinter break, but seven games in a row on the road. Puck knocked loose in front, scores! What an effort by Modine! Frederick Modine gets the Leafs on the board with 53 seconds to go in the period. Never mind the 20, 30 goals. Starting to look like a 50-goal score. <laughs> Frederick Modine ends up just with a beautiful play right here on his backhand. He picked the top corner on Richter as though he's been doing that on a daily basis. Again, he used his size and strength. He was able to get that puck away from Bukaboo, who's a big, strong defenseman himself. Modine just overpowered him and then used a great backhand shot. What a play by Modine. Now Rangers right back, Eastwood almost waltzed through. Here's Keane. Gets it up into the corner. Stevens battering away against Juskiewicz. 35 seconds left in the period. Puck came right in front to Keane. Just rolled by him. Here's Modine. Up ahead for Sullivan. Derek King moves up. Couldn't knock down a loose puck. Scores! What a shot! Oh, who's going to stop him now? King right here just ended up jockeying the puck, then got it back and put it back to Modine. Modine just blasted that puck. He may end up with a shot that would rival Al McInnes's hardest shot on that particular one. He let go with a rocket. What a blaster, and his teammates couldn't believe it. They were all smiles and congratulating him for a good reason. It's a brand new hockey game. Here's Sullivan. Tried to get it out. And Richter knocked it down. Now Modine's going to pull Samuelson out of it. Wow, is this guy playing with confidence? We talked about it earlier in the game. He's showed us that he's got that confidence. He's found the scoring touch. He's using his size and strength and going to the net. What more can you ask of him right now? Hold your breath, Mike Murphy. He gets two goals 30 seconds apart. The first one at 19.06 from Derek King and Brown. And then the second one at 19.36 from Derek King and Sullivan. And we are all tied up at two. Rangers two, King setting up Modine for two. Well, he may end up scoring 20 goals yet this season. That's 13 for him now, and he's on a pretty good streak, a hot streak. Well, certainly hot to finish up the second period. At least we're hoping that he doesn't cool down at all. Took the Leafs a while, but they finally get the offense going in the last minute of the second period, which sets the table for what should be a fine third period. All tied up at two. Here again is your intermission host, Gord Miller. Ball coming up in our McDonald's second intermission. The out-of-town scores and highlights. TSN tonight with Mike Toth. Then we'll go face-to-face -face with Edmonton goaltender Curtis Joseph, who would no doubt not want to go face-to-face -face with Frederick Modine. He has two. Go to the Rangers after two. Then came two fast ones from Freddie. Frederick Modine 
one at 1906 and one at 1936 to tie the game at two. And for the third, back to Paul and Gary. Thanks, Gord. Yeah, Modine, the big story right there in the last minute of that second period. Here's Gretzky stepping in. Gretzky moves up, gets it across, right up out of the stick of Kovalev, and he couldn't stick it to the blade to get a shot away. Here's Gretzky in front, puck fired there by Sundstrom. That was knocked away. Matt Sundin right back there to protect and to pick up the loose puck. Helped Helio. Boy, a couple of good chances for the Rangers, though, right off the bat. Both set up by Gretzky. Here's Kovalev. Fire that one up wide off the board. Samuelson with it. Poked away there by Healy. Gretzky back in the net. To Sundstrom. Kovalev is in front. Gretzky's back of the goal. In the office. Trying to set it up. And Healy sprawls out and will hang on to it. Gretzky loves to get into that office, and he loves to set the puck up right out to the best scoring position. That green zone is we're going to refer to it. Folks, take a look in the second period of play where the Toronto Maple Leafs got eight out of their 13 shots right in that green zone. This area right here is the best place to score from, and the Leafs really gave the New York Rangers some difficulty. Eight out of their 13 shots right from that area. Mike Richter was a busy man, and this man had two of the shots, two of them goals from the green zone. Here's Schneider with it. Up around for Derek King. Long pass up ahead there intended for Sullivan. Now Derek King with it. 2-2 to score. Teams all tied up, and uh, of note here, the Rangers have tied 16 times this year. LaFontaine got popped in the East Hamish. Yeah, they're tied with Colorado. Nobody else is real close. 16 ties, whoa. There's LaFontaine. Try to work it up. Sweeney was hanging in there just off the edge of the slot. Puck is cleared down the ice by the Leafs, and Lidster back to tag it up. Icing called on Toronto. Here's Finley with it. Back to Lister. Keane gets it up ahead. McCauley starting back for Toronto. Bears it is with him, so is Warriner as they come into the zone. Bears it, tried to work it out. It got right between McCauley and Warriner. Stevens fires one in. Wicked bounce off the glass right out in front. And fortunately for Healy, it was not a Ranger plant right there. Sounded big. Glass, not the bar, but there's like an empty space above the bar. Yeah, I think you're right. And between the two sheets, and that was a really weird bounce. That was the result. Hendrickson on this faceoff against Eastwood. And Hendrickson wins the draw to McCowan. Ty Domi. Played it ahead. Bukaboom has it now. Chris King controlling for the lead. Not for long, though. Keane has it. Now Domi. Chris King being pressured there. McCowan. King again, trying to get it to Domi. He was otherwise occupied. Boogaboom. Across to Stevens. Gretzky comes onto the ice for the Rangers. He's got a couple of assists in this game. Hendrickson plays it down into Rangers territory. This is Driver on the way out. Gets it up ahead to Gretzky. Kovalev and Sundstrom are with him. Here's Sundstrom, scores! Nicholas Sundstrom with his second of the game. Both set up by Gretzky. And the Rangers take a 3-2 lead. Great shot by Sundstrom. Sundstrom has been a good player all year long for the New York Rangers. He's a 
plus player. Driver set him up with that big lead pass. It could have been intercepted, though, by the Leafs. It was very close, right up to Gretzky, then to Sundstrom, who let go with a great shot, but I'm not sure from that angle Healy should have let it in. Gretzky had his head up all the way. He fed a beautiful backhand pass, just laid it right over on the stick of Sundstrom, who let go with a big shot. There's Kovalev up along the boards. Gretzky with three assists tonight. Sundstrom has a couple of goals. Gretzky loves playing the Leafs, always has. Here comes Sundin. Trying to batter his way through. Gretzky with it again. Gretzky in over the blue line. He's still got it, gets it up ahead. Nice pass up there for Driver, and he was denied. play here in the third period. Round of applause for Gretzky there as he headed towards the bench. He's had a lot of great applause tonight and for good reason. Hey, hey. Here's Lidster. Settler has it for the Leafs. Sweeney was watching him. Now Lidster works it across. Finley. I haven't seen the Rangers shadowing Modine out there yet though. Dean's up there now. They might want to put a shadow on him after those two goals he scored in the last minute of the second period. Puck fire there just wide of the net by Sweeney coming off the wing. Samuelson with a shot, scores! LaFontaine will get credit. It ricocheted in off of him. And Paul Stewart was standing right there, signaling a goal very clearly. Not kicked in. Went right off of LaFontaine. Bad break for the Leafs and for Glenn Healy in particular. Healy was ready for this shot coming from that angle. But he wasn't ready for that shot going off of Pat LaFontaine the way it did. LaFontaine didn't even move. The puck just hit him and went in. Well, the goal's coming a minute and a half apart. Sundstrom from Gretzky and Driver, and then LaFontaine from Samuelson and Sweeney. So it took the Leafs exactly 30 seconds to get back into the game and tie it. Harrison with a shot. Rebound comes out. McCauley up after it. But then the Rangers coming out to start things off in this third period and scoring two. In a minute 32, and they're once again up by a pair. Position. Nobody had Pat LaFontaine. Modine circled off him. He came in the direction of Sullivan, but there he is all alone. Now, he didn't deflect the puck in with his stick, went off his body, but there should have been a Leaf player there to take him out of the play. Johnson works the puck across. This is a power play that the Leafs are working on here. Samuelson is in the penalty box. He was called for obstruction. Obstruction interference. Here's Brown. Gets it up ahead for Johnson. Johnson augured himself right into a corner there and lost the puck. 124 to go on the power play. Matthew Schneider working it up. Gets it up to Sundin. Across for Modi. Oh, he missed by a hair. But what confidence in trying to one-time it like that. He may have put that right through Richter had he made contact. <laughs> Here's Barrison with it. 57 seconds left in the power play for the Leafs. Toronto down 4-2. to two. Here comes Brown, snaking his way towards the line, clears it in. Leafs one up there after it. Schneider couldn't keep that puck in. So Schneider almost gave the puck away. Good thing Graves was turning off, going to the bench for a line change. Derek King to the line, lost the puck and the stick. And the Leafs losing time very quickly on this power play. 27 seconds to go in their man advantage. Brown gets it up ahead. Barrison in over the blue line. Sullivan and King up there with him. Derek King up for Sullivan. Looking in front. Nobody home. Now 
Derek King moves in. Barrison centered it in front. Knocked away by Richter. And the puck clear the left of the ace. Five seconds left in the power play. Healy gets it up to Sullivan. Derek King moving up to the line. Shoots. Offside is called. The team's back at even strength. The Leafs are 0 for 7 on the power play tonight. That hurts. This game by a score of 4 to 2. Rangers have scored seven goals against the Leafs this year. They had three in their earlier meeting this year, Madison Square Garden. Wayne Gretzky has assisted on six of the seven goals. The New York Rangers have not lost in their last seven games to the Toronto Maple Leafs. They like the Leafs. Here's Gretzky. Now Settler with it. Kavich up ahead, intended for McCauley, knocked away. 11.54 to go here in the third period. No icing. It is waved off. The Leafs are out shooting the Rangers 21 to 18, but trailing them 4 to 2. This is Doug Lidster. McCallan knocked it away. Offside is called on the Rangers. Flyers Saturday afternoon. Just getting back to that point, Gary. Matt Sundin was awarded with a, a new contract by the Leafs just after he got back from the Olympics worth $22 million. And it was interesting to hear Mike Murphy's comments. He, he has been all year long as well. He should be but just effusive in his praise of Matt Sundin. Nobody deserves it more. He says he's one of the top five players in the world right now. And he was happy to see him get rewarded for his hard work. Oh, he's a real class guy. And he thinks about the team first. And he wants to win a Stanley Cup here in Toronto. Here's Johnson. Tried to bash his way there through the front door. Still after it. Working with Sundin. Now the puck played ahead to Keane. Stevens striding along the boards, gets by Smith. Not that time he didn't. Smith caught up to Stevens there, back to the net. Leafs back the other way. McCowan up to the blue line. Crisscrossing there with Johnson, but an offside call, and I believe an interference penalty coming up against the Rangers. LaFontaine is going to go to the box. LaFontaine earlier in this game had been complaining about Calls not being made on him for obstruction, and this time, ironically, it's LaFontaine right here that ends up going to the penalty box for exactly what he complained about early, and that was obstruction. You don't usually see, though, the skillful, more talented, goal-scoring type of players. They're not usually the ones that obstruct other players. That was a little different. Obstruction holding is the call. That's what happens though when coaches ask offensive players to go back and back check and pick up a man, see? You <laughs> say what? You sound as though you may have heard that excuse the odd time in your coaching career. Here's Derek King. To Sullivan, trying to get it to Modine. Here's Matthew Schneider. Schneider and Brown are back at the blue line. Sundin is out of the ice here for the Leafs on this power play. And over the line comes Sundstrom. Big shot. That was stopped by Healy. Sullivan. At center. Cleared it in. Derek King moving up after it. He and Driver along the boards. Buck centered in front. Mike Keane says thank you very much. And he gets it down the ice. 110 to go on the power play. You know, Paul, I bring up that point only because even offensive players have got a job to do defensively. And for the smaller player, it makes it difficult for him if he can't use a stick in back checking and obstruct because then he's out muscled by bigger, stronger players. So the tougher the little player is, the better it is. Here's Sundin out there now for the Leafs with 49 seconds to go in their power play. Kovalev gets it back for Snyder to Brown. Gets it up ahead. Korolev to Sundin. Barrison was looking for it. Driver found it. And 
the puck cleared out by Graves. 30 seconds left in the power play. Here comes Sundin, strides in there. Harrison was going for the slot. Comes back to Snyder, though. Up ahead for Sundin. Gets it down. Sundin waiting. Trying to get it across in front. Broken up, and Bukaboom fires it down the ice. The Leafs are now 0 for 8 on the power play. Warner up towards the corner. Back for Snyder. Todd Warner, out for Sundin, tapped it in front of the net, Domi chucked it wide. And Gretzky gets it up ahead to LaFontaine, he's on the move, backhand shot, Healy stopped that. Snyder just angled him off to a pretty bad scoring position, LaFontaine was going to score on Healy on that. Stevens gets it up for Gretzky, offside. Stevens was bursting in on the left wing and was just a stride or so offside, although Gretzky will wonder about that. Back at Gretzky's jersey, a lot of people already know this, but you see the trademark for starter. It's there on the lower left part of the jersey. Of course, Gretzky, his trademark is that he tucks in the right side. If you look at all the other Rangers, the trademark is over on that right side. So they make a special jersey just for Gretzky. So the manufacturer's trademark will be showing. Not many guys get that. Kind of a neat story. They, they've done it as far back in his career in Edmonton, but not everybody knows it. Oh, look at McCauley. Richter stopped him there, point blank. Oh. Loose puck around there, but McCauley is about the only one of the Toronto Maple Leafs that was in close enough to do anything about it. I think he's a little frustrated going to the bench that he didn't do something about it. Domi gets it up. Here's Derek King shooting. Richter wrestled that one away. Derek King after it. Domi coming up to help out. Leafs with a couple of chances. They've had 26 shots on goal tonight. And have only squeezed two by Richter. One player doing all the squeezing. Odine has a pair. King gets it up ahead. Intended for Sullivan. That was knocked away. Sweeney. Gets it up ahead. Graves in over the blue line. LaFontaine is with him. So is Sweeney. Sweeney after the puck now on the boards. Graves. Battling away against Jason Smith. Tough going in the corners as they squeeze it up along the boards. Puck comes to LaFontaine. Down for Graves, up for LaFontaine, all the way back, Leach, fires, scores! Graves! Graves gets the goal, and I tell you what, he did a lot of work down in the corner and down back of the net to help that chance happen. It was off of Leach's rebound, and it's 5-2. Graves usually does, though. He's a good, hard-working forward. You can play him at center or play him on the wing. He went to the net. There's the shot, though, by Leach from the point. Modine was back there, but where were the defense? McCowan went right up to the slot, but Graves was left right there. Adam Graves, as was Pat LaFontaine, both left in the same position by the Leafs, all alone to the left of Healy. Leafs come right back up. That one was almost slid through there by Darby Hendrickson. Settler with a shot. Into the corner, Hendrickson looking for it. Chris Kingel on the boards. Up for Hendrickson, down for Domi. Hendrickson trying to get loose in front. Leach has it now. Stevens. Across and tender for Keane that was tapped away. And offside called on the Rangers with 5.53 to play here in the third. Here's Kovalev. And offside is called. Now the Rangers have got a tough task in front of them as well. Even though they've got seven out of their next 11 games at home, the playoff race for John Muckler's team is going to be a difficult one. He knows it. But for the New York Rangers, 
The move won't have paid off for them in hiring Golan Campbell and hiring John Muckler unless they do make the playoffs. Hey, this is no knock whatsoever on John Muckler, but I think the same thing is going to happen that has happened with three other coaching changes this year. In Vancouver, they haven't turned it right around. They haven't turned it right around in Florida or Tampa either. I don't think it's the coach. Kovalev coming up. It's the old cliche. I, a lot of people would agree with this. The coach gets too much credit when the team's playing really well and too much of the blame when they're not. He doesn't score them and he doesn't keep them out. But sometimes players just stop listening to coaches and it's not that the next coach coming in is going to be necessarily any smarter than the past coach. Oftentimes it's just the need for a fresh voice. Here's Sundin. Johnson was trying to get it to him. And here's Gretzky. Gretzky waiting for the trailer. Gets it there to Leach. Fights his way in. And that was knocked away by Healy. Gretzky another shot just wide. How many times have we seen that patented move? Gretzky will come in. If he can't go for the break, that little dangle, circle back, wait for the trailer, and set him up. And when you've got Brian Leach on the ice, knowing that he's going to move in, it could work real well. Here's Graves looking for it in front of the net. Sweeney fired it wide. LaFontaine. Back intended for Graves. He's got it. Graves gets it in front. Pass was just behind Sweeney. And finally, it's cleared down the ice by Korolev. This will be an icing call on Toronto. Three minutes and 35 seconds to go in the third period. 140th time in his career that he's picked up a three-assist game. Well, these two Ranger fans are each a nine tonight. And so is Wayne Gretzky, Bill. You think he will retire at the end of the year? What's your gut feeling on it? have one right now, Paul. I honestly don't. Again, I think it depends on how he plays the remainder of this season, how the New York Rangers play the remainder of this season, and what kind of the future it looks like for the Rangers next season. Warner leaves it off. Try to catch up with it again there in the corner. Here's McCauley battling away. Back for Zettler. Play whistle down. A penalty coming up. It's going to be a holding call. Let's nip off and check out action in that Buffalo-Boston game. Here's Rangers with a 5-2 lead. There's Sweeney in the box. He gets called for holding. Sweeney gets an obstruction penalty. Right there on McCauley. McCauley ends up going down. Wayne Gretzky said in an article on the Hockey News earlier this year, he figures between the back of the net pass and that little sort of dangle waiting for the trailer to catch up, that's accounted for about 70% of his assists during his NHL career. Leach moving in, and what a great give-and-go situation you can have with a player like Leach. Leach has had a real tough season, and whether he is able to get it going is yet to be seen. It appears that Messier's absence really hurt Brian Leach a lot more than anyone ever anticipated. Was he a minus 28 heading into this game? I mean, that's astounding coming off of the kind of year he had last year. Won the Norris Trophy as the best defenseman in the league. Here's Derek King. And stop. Schneider coming up with it. King clears it in. 112 to go in the power play. Leafs in the man advantage. Needing three to tie. Richter's going to hold on to it there. This is the killer for the Leafs. The 24th power play in the league. And Mike Murphy shows really how frustrated a coach can really get when you have the opportunity throughout the course of the game to win it with your power play. Or even to tie it with your power play. And you just can't score a goal. And you've been given the opportunities throughout the night. Well, they're 0 for 8 at the power play tonight. And going back over the last 8 plus, heading on to 9 games, a collective 2 for 37. Yeah, they're 11% on the power play. 
Puck rifled there by Brown. Comes right back out. Sundin hustle back to keep it in. Korolev back of the net. Barrison. Under two minutes to go in the game. Here's Sundin. Trying to get it out for Barrison. Brown moving up, but Eastwood got there first to clear it out. Too many occasions tonight, and Barazen's been out on the ice in the offensive situations. That's where he's supposed to excel. He's avoided hanging on to the puck and making a better play. He's gotten rid of it early because he ended up being in a situation where he thought he was going to get hit. And he's got to make sure on the power play, if you're going to get power play time, you may have to hang on to the puck longer. You might have to get hit in order to make the play to help your team score a goal in the power play. Berezin's taken the easy way out a couple of times tonight, and that just hurts the whole team. Eight seconds to go on the Leafs' power play. Leach gets it up around the boards and out. Penalized player is back on. 108 to go in this game. with a rare, strong performance on the road. Last 11 road games, only two victories. Gretzky gets it up ahead to Sundstrom. Lidster steps in, off for Gretzky, back for Lidster. Rangers work it around, Kovalev up for Gretzky. Sundstrom is in front, Lidster was up there too. 30 seconds to go. Kovalev with a shot, stopped by Healy, and he hangs on to it, 28.5 seconds left. Well, the Rangers have taken advantage of the Leafs' mistakes in the third period. Again, the Rangers had the opportunity through the good luck of the schedule, and it works that way for both teams throughout the schedule, but John Muckler and his team were able to be in town last night at a leisurely evening, watch the Toronto Maple Leafs play a tough game against the Buffalo Sabres, and the third period, it's shown the Rangers have been stronger than the Leafs. The Leafs have looked a little tired and made some mental mistakes that have cost them badly. Show me in over the line and play whistled down. A penalty coming up. Domi having words with Finley after that collision there at the blue line. And Paul Stewart making the call against the Rangers here. That's Finley heading to the box with 17 seconds to go. Finley ends up stopping Domi, all right, but he ended up tripping him. And he heads to the penalty box. Boy, just to get back to John Muckler there, Gary, I mean, you talk about one big dominant thing that he brings to the table as the Rangers' new head coach, and that is a great track record. Five Stanley Cups with Edmonton, one as a head coach and four as an assistant. And players respect that. A guy who's been through the war and come away with the cup. So not a bad debut for Muckler with the New York Rangers as they storm the Toronto Maple Leafs. 5-2 to two is the final score. And the power play killing Toronto in this game. Leafs going 0 for 9 on the power play. Wayne Gretzky also had a big night for the New York Rangers. Just loves to play against the Toronto Maple Leafs. Gretzky picking up three assists tonight. On the way to the Rangers, 5-2 victory. More still to come on Molson NHL tonight in a moment. With a couple of goals at star number three, a couple of goals net Frederick Modine, star number two. But the man of the evening, we've got the big ovation at the start of the game, and then three assists. Boot Wayne Gretzky once again puts on a great show at Maple Leaf Gardens, and Wayne Gretzky joins us now live. Wayne, you'll be sad when they tear down Maple Leaf Gardens. What is it about you in this place? Well, I, uh, from day one, I've just always enjoyed playing here. I think that it uh, goes back to when I went to high school in Toronto. I used to sneak into Maple Leaf Gardens, and uh, one of the older gentlemen used to let me in uh, to watch all the NHL games in the standing room, and I used to come down for all the games. And uh, just, uh, it's a great place to play. It's all about hockey and uh, a lot of history here. And without a doubt, it's my favorite place to play. Wayne, i got to ask you about the Olympics. Obviously, uh, you were an eloquent spokesman for Canada after the, uh, the loss of the Czech Republic. I wonder, A, how much it's difficult mentally uh, coming off that, and B, how physically tired are you? Well, it was tough because uh, we knew going into this Olympics that uh, we had a whole country backing us and a whole country wanting us to do well. 
and uh, our team really focused on uh, on winning the uh, from the plane ride over to the first practice uh, in each game everybody was very uh, committed to a team effort and a team system and uh, we played very unselfishly and unfortunately we got beat in uh, in a shootout um, there's no excuses that's just the way the uh, the rules are we got beat fair and square and you know, it was tough for uh, everyone to swallow. Guys like Eric, I, I, he was so focused to get a gold medal. He was so determined, and uh, I know he was uh, devastated, and that went right through the rest of the hockey club. And uh, I know guys like Eric and Sackick and uh, Blake and Brodeur, those guys are great players. They're going to get another chance, and I'm sure in 2002 they're going to do uh, Canada proud. For me, obviously, it was my last time, and uh, I'm extremely di uh, disappointed. I, I didn't get an opportunity to win a gold medal for Canada. Um, you know, uh, the last team to win was, was ironically enough from Edmonton in 52, so it would have been a great piece on the mantle, but uh, I guess it wasn't meant to be. Um, as far as being physically tired, uh, we've all of us have been getting up at about 3, uh, 3 a.m., and uh, that's tough. Uh, you try to force yourself to go back to sleep, but our nap time seems to be 9 p.m. to 3 a.m., and uh, that's been difficult, but uh, Muck's been running some great practices, and uh, we got a nice win. Uh, Wayne, we would have all liked to use jet lag as an excuse, and then we saw Yarmar Yager and Dominic Hasek come back and put on a show in their first nights. You do the same thing at Maple Leaf Gardens, so that's got to be gratifying. <laughs> well, I was telling the guys this morning uh, when people were talking about being tired and being jet lagged, they said that uh, Yager and Hasek went all the way to Prague for a party for a day and a half and <laughs> flew all the way back over here. Yager had two and two, and Hasek was Hasek, so uh, there was no excuses, and uh, maybe mentally, uh, just it was the right place for when he played tonight because they do get excited to play in this building. Uh, as I said, I love the building, and the fans have always been great to me, so maybe that was something I needed. Maybe, fortunately, the first game for me was in this building. Wayne, there's been a lot of talk about the obstruction crackdown, and I know that historically you've always said, just let me know how you're going to call it, whatever way it's going to be, tight, loose, whatever, just be consistent and do it, do it on a consistent basis. Uh, what have you noticed in your first game back? Is it that much different? Should we be putting much stock in all this? <clears throat> well, I don't think is uh, it's where it was a few years ago, where every time you stepped in front of a guy, uh, you got a penalty. I think what they're trying to do is crack down on the obvious clutching and grabbing and the interference, and it's probably a good step for our game. And uh, I thought Stewart did a pretty good job tonight. He was pretty honest and fair to both teams. Um, as long as both teams know exactly how it's going to be each night, we can adjust and we can carry that on. My fear, as I've said before, is uh, if we're going to make these rules, we got to continue in the first round of the playoffs, the second round, the third round, the fourth round. We can't get in the Stanley Cup Finals into a Game 6 situation, and we've been calling this all along, and, and uh, our human instincts could take over, and a referee says, well, I don't want to call that play at that time. If we're going to call it, we got to call it all the way through, and if players know that, we can all adjust. Wayne, obviously a big change for you, uh, getting you back from Japan, is that there's a new man behind the bench, an old friend of yours in John Muckler. Had a chance to talk to him yesterday, and he said that one of the things he really felt was that there is still an opportunity for teams in the NHL to play that wide-open style that you guys played in Edmonton and that he had in Buffalo. Has it been a lift for you to, to see Muck behind the bench? Well, it's been uh, quite an adjustment because, uh, as I said to the guys in New York the other day, Colin uh, was great to me and... Uh, you know, unfortunately in this business it's unfair, coaches get fired and uh, I said to the players yesterday at practice that we needed to take the responsibility as uh, players and we let them down and uh, Colin's a good man and I'm sure he'll uh, be successful somewhere else again. As far as John goes, he's stepped in and uh, he's really leaned on uh, McTavish and uh, Billy Moores and Dick Todd and uh, he's come into this and you know, he's just maybe, because uh, um, he hasn't been around for 55 games, said, forget about the past, let's get positive here. Uh, as you saw tonight, we could have collapsed after the second period when they got two quick goals, but we battled through it, and uh, Sunstrom scored a nice goal to make it 3-2, to two, and this was a, a big lift for us tonight. It was a good win, and we go home tomorrow for a, a good practice, and we got the Flyers on Saturday, and hopefully we can catch them off a little bit off guard because it's their first game back. Wayne, thanks very much. By the way, you got to come back next year because the Leafs are moving to the Eastern Conference, so that'll be two games in here next season. Thanks for talking right. to us. All right, guys. Thank you very much. Wayne Gretzky, tonight's first star and another vintage performance by number 99 at 60 Carlton's. For the TSN Turning Point, brought to you by Super 8 Motels. Third period, game's tied at two. Gretzky goes to work, works it up ahead. 
And it is Nicholas Sundstrom who ends up scoring. Driver also picks up an assist. Gretzky had a big night, three assists. Sundstrom had a fine night with a couple of goals, including the game winner. A cash donation will be made to the Coaching Association of Canada for the training and development of coaches in amateur sport. On behalf of TSN and Super 8 Motels, with over 1,600 locations throughout North America, life is great at Super 8. Muckler celebrates his first victory as head coach of the New York Rangers. 5-2 the final. Another big night for Gretzky at Maple Leaf Gardens. Here again is Gordon Miller. All right, welcome back to NHL Tonight. Control us bringing you up to date on the other... The, uh, the Emperor. The Emperor of Japan, right. Uh, <laughs> I think they have one of those. Um, never mind the hockey. Uh, what was Japan like? Oh, it was terrific, and I think the players really enjoyed the, the cultural experience and certainly all the other people that were there. Hey, it's different. I'll tell you, they, they are the nicest, friendliest, politest, most dignified people you could possibly imagine. So you know that myself and a lot of the other people who are from the <laughs> National Hockey League didn't fit in all that well. And, of course, I did pick up some of the local customs, Gord, so from here on in, it's this for you. What's that? Which is when you, uh, if you want a cab or you want something, if the guy doesn't want you in, he gives you the big... That means no, you get lost. And that's as, that's as emphatic as it ever got for the Japanese having to deal with all these foreigners coming in and trying to stir up trouble in their so, country. So let me get so this you straight. Ask a question. So let me get this straight. For eight, nine years now, all I've had to do is this to get rid of you? Is uh, that no, it? No, as a matter of fact, when you ask me a question now, Gord, I'm just going to give you one of those if I don't want to answer. <laughs> and this would be different how. Believe it or not, we're actually going to spend six hours together on Monday night. It's a double header night on TSN. Toronto and Pittsburgh kicks it off as Matt Sundin and company meet Yarmir Yager and gang. That's followed by the Vancouver Canucks and the Los Angeles Kings. It all starts on Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. And coming up next, Saskatchewan and New Brunswick renew their ages-old rivalry at the Scott Tournament of Hearts. It's live from the Agrodome in Regina. It's coming up next. And coming up at 2 a.m. Eastern Time, 11 p.m. Pacific, it is Sports Desk with all the news from a very busy day in sports. Let us know Sergey Fedorov, the Tabbies, signed a couple today, the baseball highlights, the NBA as well. It's all coming up on Sports Desk. For Bob McKenzie, Paul Romanek, Gary Green, and all of us at TSN, I'm Gord Miller. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time on the NHL tonight.